One of 162 as we welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Ricky Vitalico, Ben Davis, Ruben Amaro Jr., John Cruck coming up in a moment. I know it is only one game, but in the middle of this one, it felt a little bit like October. It did when you've got Strider on the mound, you got Zach Wheeler on the mound, you got Brandon Marsh with a two run home run to put the Phillies in the lead against the Atlanta Braves, the perennial division leaders, and then it all went down the tubes. I have never been more disappointed in an opener than I than I am right now because it is the Braves and they wanted to set this up right. Ricky Bo? Yeah, I mean, you could look at it any way you want it. The Phillies uh, bullpen didn't show up in this one. You look at Brogdon, awful. Alvarado was, was terrible. But when, when you look at the three between Strom, Alvarado, and Brogdon, five walks between them. You can't, you can't keep walking, guys, and expect to come out on the better end of this. Uh, again, Zach Wheeler, outstanding. That's Amazing. all you can say about Wheeler. He deserved the win in this ballgame. The bullpen completely fell apart. You might want to stop walk, looking at all the articles about you, period. Yeah, this was anything but the best bullpen in baseball. We have been talking about that going in, Ben, and they really faltered, starting with Alvarado and then Brogdon. Yeah, they just looked to me like they were overthrowing the ball just a little bit and something they can obviously fix. Their, their arms are way too good in that bullpen to see what more of what we saw today. Uh, I, I look for them to right the ship. They'll be totally fine. Uh, it's not something, in my opinion, to really worry about. Because they are, I think, I think it's a very, very good bullpen. We just didn't see it today. Uh, I liked what I saw, loved what I saw out of Zach Wheeler. And uh, some of the approaches today, from an offensive standpoint, I really liked as well. Obviously, that home run by Marsh. But uh, Bomer with a couple hits. It was, it was a decent day. Ruben, you've got another stat of the game regarding one through four. Yeah, the one through four hitters, not very good today, uh, Michael. I mean, we're talking about uh, 0 for 14 with seven punch outs, a couple of walks. I know that they faced one of the best right handers in all of baseball, uh, but that's a little disconcerting. Um, I know that they, uh, this is just one baseball game. I get it. Uh, you like to show up a little bit more for, especially with the way Zach Wheeler pitches uh, as the two gentlemen just just stated. But, um, you know, I, it's just not – it's one of those games. It's one of 162, um, and, and for me, I mean, it's, it, one of the concerns that I have is whether or not the bullpen, all the guys in the bullpen, had enough reps during the course of spring training to be ready for today. Um, it just seemed like they were a little off. Uh, obviously, they could not command the, the, their pitches. And, uh, you know, the Braves, great hitting team. They took advantage of it. Let's go across the street, check in with John Cruck. Called today's game on NBC10 with Tom McCarthy. John, great to see you after the offseason. Your, your description of this one when it looked like, you know what, the Phillies had a good chance to take the opener. Yeah, I, you know, these are games that, uh, you, know, you know, I think it was Ricky said or Ben said, you know, when Zach Wheeler's pitching like he did, uh, you know, and you have a lead. You you got to win those games. Uh, bullpen was just not good today, and and you know you, you hope that's not uh, going to last throughout the season. I don't think it will for Alvarado uh, or Strom. Uh, you know, I don't know about Connor Brogdon. I think a question mark's still out on Connor. Uh, but I, you know, if, if we're worried about Strom and Alvarado after one game, yeah, we might be worrying about the wrong stuff. All right, I'll throw you the layup. Zach Wheeler was really good in this one. I mean, he threw six innings, only five hits. It, it, that's that's exactly what you want to see out of your starting pitching. Am I right? Yeah, and, and you know, that's the great thing about opening day is, is your two best pitchers, if they come out of spring training healthy, of course, you know, you're going to see the two best. And, uh, you know, Spencer Strider last year, 20 and five. Uh, but Zach, Zach was better than him today. Uh, it's just I mean, it's just a fact, and I think that tells you, um, you know, that decision that Rob Thompson made early in spring training that Zach was going to be uh, the opening day starter, stopping that streak by Aaron Nola, and Aaron even said it's the right choice. He's, he's the number one guy, and, uh, you know, he showed it today. Uh, not too much happening offensively today, the big home run by Marsh, but I want to talk about Bohm and, and Stott a little bit, two youngsters, that, but I think they're really starting to come into their own. Is that what you're seeing out of those guys right now? Yeah, Ben, you know, I, I, I said it coming in that this Phillies team should be better than they were last year and better than they were the year before when they went to the World Series, simply for the fact of Bryson Stott, Brandon Marsh, and Alec Bohm, uh, you know, three young players who I think last year – 
you know, you can prove yourself to the team. You can prove yourself to the to a manager or think you've proven yourself. But once you prove it to yourself that you can play at this level and play well at this level and be really, really good at this level, uh, I, I think those three are going to take off this year and uh, really do some special things. Now it's up to some of the veteran guys we have uh, to, to step up with them. John, one of the guys that actually did throw the ball well was, was Jeff Hoffman. Can you talk a little bit about his overall development for this club and how important he is for for that pen? Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, you know, if Bryce entered last season uninjured, if he didn't have to have Tommy John, we might not know about Hoffman. You know, the only reason he's here is because he came up here to pitch against Bryce when, when Bryce was starting to get live ABs. And, you know, I think I think Bryce was the one who told, uh, you know, Rob Thompson, Dave Dombrowski, this guy can pitch, man. And he has been, I, I think, you know, that bridge to get to Alvarado um, and Sir Anthony and guys down there in the boat. Well, last year it was Kimbrell. But, um, you know, getting those guys, he did such a great job no matter what situation they put him in. And, uh, you know, he just continued that today. And I, I really think that. Confidence wise, and Rick, you know, as a, as a reliever, you know, that confidence can get shaky every once in a while. If you have one, you know, you give up two runs in an inning as a, as a reliever and you're only a one inning pitcher, you know, that, that's like, like, my gosh, like going 0 for 10 games as a hitter. Uh, but you know, this, this young man has come in and, and, and has proven to them that, yeah, you can depend on me no matter when you need me. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, it doesn't matter. You know, if you go into extra innings, he hadn't pitched yet. I would throw him out there because he seems to always get out of those innings when he comes in. John, the bottom line, it seems, in Major League Baseball in general and in particular with our Philadelphia Phillies is just getting in the playoffs. They're proof yep. positive that once you get in, you can do great things. And the Braves are proof positive that a division crown doesn't necessarily make everything okay. So this is just one uh, one loss for the Phillies. What do you think going forward here now? Well, it's going to be interesting in the next two games because, uh, you know, we have a lot of lefties in our lineup. It's going to be interesting to see what Rob Thompson does uh, with Max Fried and Chris Sale pitching the next two games, two, two pretty tough left-handed pitchers. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see is, is Whit Merrifield going to get playing time in those games? Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's going to be – I think the next two games of the series are going to be interesting to see how Rob Thompson is going to play his hand when he has left-handed pitchers on the other team starting. I get concerned about the guys that, that come out of spring training with very few reps. So and I look at the, the, the games, the A games that they played, and you see the numbers that they displayed today. Not very good, obviously, a tale of two different bullpens because the Braves are much better. But um, when they don't get enough reps, they had like – an average of like five or six times on the mound in the A games. I know that Ricky probably wanted eight to ten reps during I, the course I will, of the spring. I will tell you this much, Rube. I was very simple. Like at the beginning of spring, it was probably once every three days for about a week and a half. Then it went once every two days. Then the next thing you know, I wanted to do back-to-backs. I wanted to do multiple innings. And then at the end of spring training, I just wanted to feel like I was at 100%. I'm not talking about – Everything at 100%. I needed my velocity up to. And one of the issues they did have, they had had an illness that ran through the clubhouse in the early part of the of, uh, of the spring, and it kind of hurt a lot of guys, uh, obviously, from being able to get on the mound. Now they did get some work down in the B games and, and some games, uh, you know, simulated type games, but it's not the same. And I think this bullpen is going to be much better. There's no question about it. They're much better than what we saw today, uh, but it was a little concerning out of the shoot. When you want to start really fast. You got to have your bullpen throwing throwing the baseball well because the starters aren't going to be all that stretched out. That's a great point. When you watch this game, it didn't pass the eye test and it didn't pass the smell test. But it was yeah. passing the eye test. It was through hit five, the, what, the eight, eighth inning. Yeah, and seventh then, and eighth innings just boom. kind of fell apart. All right, Rob Thompson, post game. Here's his thoughts on this loss. Rob, can you can you explain the pitching sequence in the seventh inning? The pitching sequence. See, that's where it started to fall apart. Oh, with Strom starting the inning? Yeah. Well, with the two lefties in there, um, felt like that was a pretty good spot for him. We knew that they were going to pinch hit. Didn't mind the matchup, him on Duvall. Just hung a breaking ball. So, I mean, really, it, it was very uncharacteristic of our entire bullpen that last three innings. A lot of walks. Um, you know, 
just didn't seem to have a feel for throwing strikes. No, no. We're going to take care of him. You had Hoffman there. Why did you like the strong versus two ball matchup as opposed to Hoffman there? Well, plus early in the season now, we got to be careful with how we use our bullpen. So once you know, once we got past Duvall, then I had to go to Hoffman. Um, you know, because some of these guys aren't going to be able to go back to back. So you got to be careful with that. Strom threw the ball extremely well during spring training. Got left handers out. Got right handers out. Um, we just liked his um, his pitches against Duvall. Why do you think uh, Alvarado struggled like he did? Looked like he just had a. Couldn't get a feel for the baseball. Maybe it was the cold weather. I'm not sure, but um, like I said, very uncharacteristic of really our entire pen. And they're, they'll be better. I'm not. I'm not concerned about that. Where do you kind of go from here with Brogdon? Because that was kind of a carryover from last year, not throwing strikes. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be able to throw strikes. That's that's for sure, and, and be able to land his his change up. Um, yeah, so we've got some work to do there. Expanded at times, certain guys expanded, but um, you know, again, you have five walks in the last three innings. You have 15 strikeouts during the course of the games. Um, you know, we're we're going to strike out some, but that's a little bit much. Did it feel like a wasted opportunity? I mean, you got Strider out after five. We only gave you six shutouts. Yeah, you know, Marsh hits a two-run homer, and you're feeling pretty good with with the bullpen that we have. It just it just didn't play out that way. So. Um, you know, that, that'll change. I have <laughs> complete confidence in our bullpen and our offense. What did you like about Wheeler today? Uh, through strikes, um, fastball was good. Sinker was really good. He was tying people up. Split was good. Um, you know, it looked like he a little trouble early landing his breaking ball, but then he got it as the, as the game went on. I thought, really, I thought he was outstanding. Were you happy with the approach of some of the younger guys like Marsh, um, Stott, yeah, I, I was fine with it, you know, and Rojas. You know, Ro, Rojas saw 15 pitches and three at-bats and, and drew a walk and got a stolen base. And, you know, if he can do that, he's going to create some stuff. Five hits, obviously, not not what you want to see. Why do you think, I know Strider started, mm -hmm. why do you think the offense struggled? Well, I... I mean, you got to hand it to Strider a little bit. He's got good stuff. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know why they struggled, but I have full confidence that uh, they're going to come in here tomorrow and be raring to go. Outstanding out of him. 89 pitches, 63 strikes, no walks. No walks. That does it for me every time. And um, he just, he's just going to get stronger. And I know that's hard to say because of how dominant he was today. But you have 18 swings and misses against that lineup. You're doing something right. Not, Pretty special. It doesn't doesn't surprise me at all. This is one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. And when I say pitchers, that's what I mean. I mean, this is a guy who's always had a great arm, but he pitches now and he utilizes the both sides of the plate. Uh, he's smart. He's intelligent. He knows exactly what he wants to do with the baseball. Uh, really impressive effort. Unfortunately, they couldn't back him up. To the clubhouse, Zach Wheeler post game. Uh, felt good. Um, you know, it's an honor, and I don't take it lightly. So, uh, you know, to be able to go out there and pitch well um, against a good team, and, um, you know, it's, it's satisfying. You know, we didn't get the result that we wanted, but uh, it's a long season. It's game number one. So, um, you know, we'll get back on track and get it going. Did you feel you could have gone longer than six innings? Um, I mean, I didn't go that long in, in spring all that much, so... Uh, like I said, it's game one, start one. Uh, uh, it's, you don't want to press on the gas too much. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's a long season, so he's got to keep that in mind. And um, you know, I didn't get the build up that I normally would have because, uh, you know, some things that happened in spring. So um, I think I missed a start, and I probably would have been up to 80 or 90 pitches and been able to go a little bit deeper today, but uh, it's not the end of the world. And, um, uh, 30-something more starts. So, 
Were you happy with the splitter today? Yeah, yeah. It was a really good pitch for me today. I threw a couple to the backstop, so <laughs> it's always fun. And, uh, you know, he's just about making adjustments with it once you're out there. Um, got the results that I wanted with it, though. Uh, there's a two two base hits with it. Just little bleeders right down the third baseline. So mm-hmm. that's kind of frustrating, but you're also getting really soft contact, so hopefully that'll uh, you know, kind of fix itself, and um, I was just happy with that pitch in particular today.